همگان عزیز سلام به برنامه پل خوش آمدین افغانستان و پاکستان به صفت پالیسی جدید اداره اوباما به شمار می رود امشب گفت و شنید خواهیم داشت بر کارمندان عالی رتبه ملکی و نظامی در قبال پالیسی و استراتژی جدید یالات متحده مفهوم استراتژی برای منطقه امکانات مذاکره به طالبان و وعده ها برای ازیاد نیروهای ناتو در آغاز برنامه مصاحبه اختصاصی با اشخاص کلیدی اداره اوباما مهندسان اصلی استراتژی نظامی جدید و همچنان جنرال و کماندان عمومی خواهیم داشت بر ما در استودیو سیارجان زیا ژورنالیست تلویزیون ماتولو که برای دیدن از امریکا ابراد میدیا تشریف آوردند تشکر بسیار زیاد سیارجان تشکر از شما از بودن با شما در اینجا بسیار زیاد خوش وقت هستم در جریان بودن ما به ایالات متحده امریکا و در جریان سفر ما به ایالات متحده امریکا رئیس جمهور براک اوباما استراتژی تازه ایالات متحده امریکا را در قبال افغانستان و پاکستان اعلام کرد در این مدت متونستم گفتگوی با یکی از جنرالان متقاعد اردوی ایالات متحده امریکا آقای دیوید گرینج در مزرعهش در الینوی در گلینا داشته باشم با همچنان تانستم گفتگوی ویژه با آقای رابرت گیتس وزیر دفاع ایالات متحده امریکا در پنتاگون داشته باشم گفتگوهای ما با منظور پیدا کردن معلومات و گزارش های بیشتر از توقعات اداره تازه ایالات متحده امریکا از منطقه بود We are sending a lot more trainers. We are going to provide money uh, to expand the army and the police so that uh, they can, in partnership with us, uh, provide uh, better security for uh, the Afghan people. در همین هواخر رئیس جمهور اوباما از فرستادن 4000 نیروی تازه به خاطر آموزش بهتر نیروهای نظامی و امنیتی افغانستان خبر داد. In the near term, uh, ultimately, it will all be the responsibility. of the Afghan uh, army and the Afghan police. Uh, we have no desire uh, to be in Afghanistan any longer than we have to to help Afghans uh, make their own country secure. در حالی که تربیه نهادهای امنیتی افغانستان یکی از گزینه های کلیدی به شمار می رود اما جنرال گرینج می گوید که در پهلوی گزینه نظامی راه برد تازه اداره براک اوباما در برگرینده گزینه های دیگره هم هستند. Diplomacy, information, military economics right now the military the big m is yeah. is our main focus more troops more troops more troops do i believe there should be more troops yes but with the troops to provide the protection not so much on the outpost but for the villagers that's where we need the protection comes must come a very strong economic package That the strategy must include all those elements if it's going to be successful for the long term. The military is only short term. It only sets conditions for the other things to happen. ایجاد اعتماد و باور در میان مردم افغانستان یک جزء مهم دیگر به خاطر کامیابی راهبرد تازه ایالات متحده آمریکا در افغانستان است. Clearly, uh, we want the Afghan people to trust us and to trust uh, our coalition partners that we are there. to help them, uh, not for uh, purposes of our own, other than uh, the same purpose that the Afghan people have, which is uh, for Afghanistan not to be a safe haven uh, for terrorists who kill them and want to kill us. Uh, and, and so we need to build the trust that, that we are in this together, that we are partners, and that we have no objectives in Afghanistan other than uh, helping the Afghan people secure their own country. رابرت گیتس وزیر دفاع ایالات متحده ای امریکا بر اهمیت و حساسیت همکاری های پاکستان در راهبرد منطقه‌ای به خاطر ریشه‌کن ساختن افراط‌گرایی در آن سوی مرزها تأکید می‌کند. Some of the agreements uh, in the western part of Pakistan are a concern to us. Uh, in fact, it was some of those agreements in 2006, 2005, 2006 that we believe led to the increase Uh, in the number of uh, violent extremists coming across the border into Afghanistan, they no longer had to worry uh, about Pakistani troops because of, of the deals where that were made uh, under President Musharraf. Um, I think the Pakistani government is coming to understand uh, that what is going on in western Pakistan uh, is as great a danger to the government in Islamabad uh, as it is to Afghanistan. And, 
Uh, they have, uh, the Pakistani army has been doing a lot of fighting. A number of thousands of Pakistani soldiers have died uh, in the western part of the country fighting these extremists. And one of our goals in this new strategy is to see how we can improve cooperation between Afghanistan and Pakistan who have a common interest uh, in getting rid of these extremists. Pakistan is key to the region. Pakistan, as you know, with the tribal areas, it's a very powerful anti-government area along the Afghanistan border. Pakistan is in a very delicate position between the different parts of its own country. Plus it's a nuclear power. It has the problems of India as well. So it's a very difficult situation. So with asking the Pakistani government to do something against terrorists, we must also provide the economic support as well and somehow persuade the people along the border that is a better life. It's yeah. a better life, it's a more peaceful life. You cannot just take a military option to do this. So you can't just do Afghanistan without doing Pakistan. They must be done together. It must be a regional approach. And I think that General Petraeus, I think Secretary Gates, I think now our administration is looking at doing that. I just pray that they follow through. اما ایالات متحده امریکا دیگر نظر به گذشته ها مایل به نوشتن یک چک سفید پول برای افغانستان و هم پاکستان نیست. اداره برک اوباما اعلان کرده است که پس از این از هر دو بازیگران کلیدی در منطقه خواهان جوابگویی صاف و صریح است. Well, clearly we want to make sure that the money we are spending uh, both in Afghanistan and in Pakistan is being spent to good effect and to deal with the threats to both countries. And one of the things that is new about the strategy is that we are going to create uh, benchmarks or, or criteria by which to evaluate the success uh, of, of the efforts that we are making, the efforts the Afghan government is making in recruiting soldiers to its army and its police, as well as the effectiveness of the Pakistanis in dealing uh, with the problems on the, in their western part. Success one is the people have they govern themselves from the local tribal level all the way up to the, the government of Afghanistan. They have the, they, their people are protected, a safe and secure environment. They have a, a way of life, a, a market, a, a, some type of market, not only to feed themselves, but to also trade uh, within the country and across the borders. The will of the people is always the key position. Remember, we lost the will of the people in Vietnam. So I, I hope that, I pray that the will of the people of the United States continues to support the people of Afghanistan. Well, I'm sure that the journey of the trip and after the meeting, I'm sure that the Prime Minister will be able to support the people of Afghanistan because of the fact that 5,000 people have been killed, and 3,000 of them, especially because of the termination of the election of the people of Afghanistan, will be able to support the people of Afghanistan. آنها را متقاعد بسازه تا پنج هزار نیروی دیگر به افغانستان بفرستن مریم جان تشکر بسیار زیاد سیار جان بعد از یک وقفه کوتا بس خواهیم داشت بالای استراتژی نظامی و باز از تغییرات در قسمت اولیت های بودیجه با ما باشید Secretary John Gastride, Mawen Mohine, Wazarat Kharaja, Baray Umur Junub Sharki Asia and Asia Miana, Hamra Ba Mawen Wazarat Kharaja, Agai Richard Armitage, Dar Zaman Edare Rais Jamur Bush, Hamchanan Eshan Ba Sifat Rais Hamahangi Baray Afghanistan, Bain Salai Doazar Paint, Ela Doazar Haft, Efai Wazifa Namudahan. و خانم سفیر شیفر سفیر در چندین کشور و فعلا رئیس پروگرام برای آسیای جنوبی در مرکز مطالعات و تحقیقات بین المللی قبلا ایشان برای سی سال به صفت دیپلمات افای وظیفه نمودهند از آن جمله معاون معین وزارت خارجه برای آسیای جنوبی بین سالهای 1989 الی 1992 Thank you for coming to the show. Thank I want to first um, go to the interview with Sierra Zia from Tolo TV. Secretary Gates said, quote, we have no desire to be in Afghanistan any longer than we have to, um, to help the Afghans make their own country secure, end quote. Um, what do you think is a realistic timetable to withdraw U.S. forces from Afghanistan? Well, 
having had the opportunity to travel to Afghanistan on a number of occasions, my sense is that uh, there will be a requirement for an international presence to help bring along the capacity of the Afghan government for many, many years. And I believe General Petraeus in a recent uh, uh, U.S. Institute of Peace address suggested that 25 years is a time frame we should be comfortable with, and I concur with that. 25 years, do you think it will take that long for the Afghan security forces to be at a stage where they can I provide think that, for security? I think mentoring and training not only security forces, but government officials and uh, local officials is something that takes a long time to inculcate some of the concepts of, uh, of service and governance uh, for, uh, an for a, a group that's uh, been without government for close to 30 years. So that it's taken 30 years to get here shouldn't surprise us that it'll take 30 years to provide uh, the level of understanding and knowledge necessary to, to really be comfortable with the, those mm -hmm. concepts. People in Afghanistan now are looking at this new strategy or trying to find out information about it. And the Obama administration has said that they expect to see tangible results um, from the development efforts that they're putting into Afghanistan and Pakistan, and that they will now start holding the governments accountable. Quoting now from the U.S. plan, this will involve assistance that is geared to strengthening government capacity and the message that assistance will be limited without the achievement of results. How strictly do you think this should be interpreted especially in light of the capacity issues that there are in light of the U.S.'s own issues with allocating its foreign assistance? Um, and also, do you believe that the Obama administration will limit military assistance if they don't see these results? I think the Obama administration, or the leadership of the Obama administration, starting with President Obama himself, had decided before he took office that they could not afford a failure in Afghanistan. The Democrats in the U.S. Congress during the days of the George W. Bush administration took that position very clearly. They saw Afghanistan as the good war, uh, the one whose purposes and execution they were broadly speaking in accord with that the United States had to follow through on. Having said that, the test is achieving results, but it, the test is not necessarily achieving success in a very short time. Uh, John speaks of a 25-year requirement for an international presence. Afghanistan has been a peculiarly difficult country uh, for outsiders to influence over many, many years. It's never had a very strong central government. The tension between Kabul and the regions has always been very strong, long before the United States ever thought about being involved. And so I think the administration feels great time pressure to start this process and to have that start be visible. You know, in, in bringing about this change, of course, there's challenges in Afghanistan, and one of them is corruption. Um, should the Afghan government be given specific guidelines to meet, um, you know, to curb corruption in exchange for assistance from the international community? There are countries that have made this transition. Singapore, for example, there was a time when corruption was a horrible problem there. It's now virtually unknown. They had the good fortune of very good governance to help them make that transition. But uh, let's be clear, there is no magic formula for curbing corruption. Uh, there but are, it can be done, looking it, at the experience it, of Singapore. It has been done, and one hopes that it will be done in Afghanistan. And I'm sure that the United States will be trying to help. But to be honest, I think the Afghan government and those who want to help it will be doing a certain amount of experimentation to see what works. One critical ingredient, though, is getting the economy going again. If you have a real economy that increasingly accounts for employing people and economic activity so that it's starting to push narcotics out of the way. Then at least you have something to show people. You aren't simply telling them, don't be corrupt, mm -hmm. because the purely negative advice can't win in a contest for survival. Ma ba basse khud, baad az ek wakf kota, da bari strategi jadid raiis jamur Obama, dawam khahem dad. Ba ma bashed. Bye.
برمیگردیم با آقای سکرتری گاسترایت و سفیر خانم شیفر. I want to go back to the issue with, of negotiating with the Taliban. Secretary of State Clinton recently said that Taliban members in Afghanistan who, quote, abandon extremism must be granted an honorable form of reconciliation. Um, and Secretary Gates told the Tolo TV journalist C.R. Zia that some Taliban fighters, they're not really ideologically committed and they could be persuaded, you know, to drop their weapons. Uh, some of the Taliban groups have said that they will not. For example, Taliban commander Sirajuddin Haqqani said there's no such thing as a moderate Taliban. Um, who do you think is right? Is there such thing as a moderate Taliban that the U.S. can actually negotiate with? Well, <clears throat> first of all, I think uh, our, our goal in Afghanistan was never to kill all the insurgents. Our goal is to get those who are opposed to the government of Afghanistan, the the elected government of Afghanistan to join that process. Um, it's not surprising to me that the leadership of the Taliban is suggesting that there's no moderate uh, individuals who might be uh, part of their cause for one reason or another. Uh, they're trying to bolster their, uh, bolster their ranks, but uh, there's been a reconciliation program in Afghanistan since 2002. Uh, and my sense is that this new strategy will provide additional resources to make that a more effective pillar to our strategy. And I'm absolutely confident that there will be those um, who lay down their arms. What about this issue of transitional justice, that if you allow people to come in who were previously causing harm to others, then what kind of message does that send to the people to actually follow the laws? You know, I think you have to look at this in a larger framework. The Taliban have been active in Afghanistan since at least 1994. They were in charge of the government for a while, then they were exiled, and then they were back to being insurgents. I think that when you look at countries that have successfully come out of a civil war situation, which is the case with Afghanistan, in many cases you find that there has been some mechanism for bringing the insurgents out of the cold. This has certainly been the case in Northern Ireland. It has certainly been the case in South Africa. Uh, Afghanistan is different from those places, but the fundamental problem is still, how do the Afghans live together peacefully? And it's not up to the, to the United States to decide who is inside and outside this process. The real test is, are you willing to make it a political process and to live with the political results? As long as it's a war, you're gonna be treated as if it were a war. If you can make it a political process, then maybe you can have an ending with better results for everyone. Um, I want to move to the issue of Pakistan. Both of you have experience uh, with portfolios covering both Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, we heard Secretary Gates on the tape say that the Pakistani government is beginning to understand that what's going on in Western Pakistan can affect Pakistan as negatively as it can affect you know, neighboring mm -hmm. Afghanistan. Uh, do you think that the Pakistanis understand this threat to themselves? There were record numbers of political killings in Pakistan in 2008. There was a new record set in 2009. Suicide bombings have become a very frequent occurrence. Much of the suicide bombing has been aimed at the military. So the government should have responded instantly, forcefully, and cleverly. I don't actually think that it has. The Pakistani government. The Pakistani government. government. I think there is considerable awareness that this phenomenon of suicide bombings and extremism, not just in the tribal areas, but in the settled areas of Pakistan, is very dangerous. I do not think there's a consensus on how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And what about this, you know, kind of severe deficit of trust between Afghanistan and Pakistan? Um, do you think that these trilateral summits with Afghanistan, Pakistan, and the U.S. can help address that? Absolutely. I think it's a, a, a wise uh, course of action. And I think that the more of such uh, arrangements at every level, not just at senior levels, but at uh, the brigade level, the tactical level, there's a tripartite commission that uh, takes place on the, on the border. If there are similar arrangements that can be uh, uh, cobbled together to deal with economic issues, the more contact that can be um, manufactured between the three, the better, and so I certainly support it. I want to go to the issue of NATO, you know, having its 60th anniversary, and of course Afghanistan was a priority item on the agenda. President Obama said, quote, 
We want to do everything that we can to encourage and promote the rule of law, human rights, the education of women and girls in Afghanistan, economic development, and infrastructure development. But I also want people to understand that the first reason we are there is to root out Al-Qaeda so that they cannot attack members of the alliance. Do you think that the new strategy, how do you think it could balance these two very different objectives? But they're not different. The I think President Obama is absolutely correct in saying that the primary purpose of the U.S. president is to make Americans safer. The primary purpose of NATO is to make the NATO countries safer. The reason they are in Afghanistan is that they've concluded that establishment of the rule of law and all those other objectives, if they are successful, will make the Western countries uh, safer. And that is what gives strength to the NATO engagement. And, and lastly, on the military strategy, um, Secretary Gates recently announced a reshaping of the Pentagon's uh, budgeting to target more of a counterinsurgency warfare. Um, do you think we'll see a drastic way in the war, in the way that the war is being fought in Afghanistan? No, I do not. Uh, first of all, the equipment that the war is going to be fought with is already in place and to a large extent it's already in Afghanistan. The level of troops will go up. The, the military strategy and the military tactics are going to be adapted to the circumstances as they change. It would be foolish on the part of any American military official to settle on one unchanging uh, set of tactics for use in a war that's as dynamic as the one in Afghanistan. So I don't expect to see sudden changes, but gradual adaptation to the situation as it develops. Okay. My, my sense is that counterinsurgency is manpower and money intensive. And the new strategy suggests additional manpower and potentially more manpower to come. General Petraeus testified before the House Armed Services Committee that he was probably going to request an additional 10,000 troops. Um, so manpower on the ground makes a difference in the security situation. The, the other pillar to that, though, is the, uh, the economic support that goes with that. So far, I've seen the budgets, and they suggest about $800 million of additional support. Um, my question really is, is that substantial enough to do, as Ambassador Schaefer suggested, jumpstart the Afghan economy? We haven't been successful internationally. We haven't been successful doing that thus far, providing an alternative. And so are we doing everything we can on the economy? to jumpstart the Afghan agribusiness opportunities. I hope so, but I think that deserves a very close look. Watashakura Frawan as Safir Khanom Schaefer was Secretary Gastright. Watashakura Khas as Siarjan Zia, journalist at Tilvizuna Ma Tolo. Ba omede nazariyat tan peshnadat beshtar shuma da bare barname pal. Lutfan nazariyat wa peshnadat tan ra tawasat internet ba website America Abroad Media .org و تولو .tv با ما به میان بگذارید و امید دیدار شما دوستان و برنامه بعدی پل خدایار و نگدارت شما